Hey everyone, this is Jay Ferg, and in this video I'm going to be discussing capacity and competency. In terms of terminology, capacity and competency both refer to a patient's ability to understand information they are given and their ability to appreciate the consequences of the decisions they make. They are typically used interchangeably, although capacity is often used in the clinical setting while competency is used in the legal setting. Since I'm focusing on clinical medicine, I'll be referring to capacity in this video. In the clinical setting, capacity is typically presumed unless there are reasons to judge otherwise. Sometimes, those reasons are quite obvious. Other times, the signs are more subtle, like if a patient seems confused or is struggling to retain information. Such instances don't determine capacity on their own, but they could signal the need to assess the patient. When a healthcare professional does have a reason to question capacity, they must conduct a capacity assessment which typically involves asking the individual questions related to the treatment decision. For example, to assess how well a patient understands the information, they could be asked to explain the condition or treatment back to their healthcare professional in their own words. To assess how well a patient appreciates the information, they could be asked to explain their views on the condition or treatment and the likely outcome. In addition to the questions, an assessment into a patient's capacity may be supplemented by administering standardized tests or procedures that measure cognitive ability and brain function. It is important to remember that judging capacity is about the quality of the decision-making process, not the actual decision. If a patient makes a decision that appears disagreeable, unreasonable, or could put them at risk, it does not necessarily reflect their capacity. It is also important to recognize that capacity is not generalizable. It depends on a particular person under particular circumstances at a particular time. Someone may lose their capacity momentarily due to physical or psychological conditions like intoxication, infection, or dehydration. Someone may not be capable yet due to their age. Or someone may have lost their capacity permanently because they are suffering from a disease like Alzheimer's. If a patient is found to be incapable, then the physician has an obligation to find a substitute decision maker. That is someone to make decisions for the individual in question when they do not have the capacity to do so themselves. Choosing who should take that role is commonly assisted by the hierarchy of decision makers. The first option would be a substitute decision maker appointed by the patient before they are deemed to be incapable. If the patient never chose a substitute decision maker, the next in line is an individual with a defined relationship to the patient, such as a spouse, partner, parents or children, sibling or another relative. If a substitute decision maker cannot be found, or if there are concerns that the substitute decision maker is making choices that are harmful to the patient or against their wishes, a legal representative can be appointed. It is possible for the patient or family to appeal the decision of the physician, both in regards to the results of the capacity assessment, as well as who has made the substitute decision maker. How that is done depends on where you are. This completes my video on capacity and competency. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please subscribe to my channel below to learn more about what the hell is bioethics.